Say goodbye to petrol pumps. Say hello to car park recharging. As electric vehicles make inroads into Hong Kong, the biggest winners could be power companies, CLP, and Hong Kong Electric. Already, CLP is preparing for the possibility. With today's technology, electric vehicles can be recharged by any standard electrical outlet. CLP wants to make sure motorists have convenient access to these outlets, be it at home or at a commercial car park. Hong Kong is a very uh, suitable place for uh, UV deployment. Uh, the city is compact, traveling distance uh, is short. Also very importantly is that most of the car parks are located in or close to commercial and residential complexes, where an adequate and reliable electricity distribution network has been put in place. Because of the existence of such an infrastructure network providing uh, power supply for charging batteries is as easy as simple as making a normal supply connection. In order for electric vehicles to be adopted in wide number, recharging stations will need to be as ubiquitous as petrol stations are today. COP has taken the first step, joining up with Wilson and Link to provide metered recharging points at 21 car parks inside COP's service area. Here's how it will work. Motorists pull into a specially designated parking bay. You connect your EV to the charging station. It's little different than plugging in your home stereo. You then need to pay. You start by telling the charging kiosk where you've parked. Then you select how many hours you need for recharging. A two-hour charge costs $6 and is good for about 25 kilometers of travel. Swipe your Octopus card and you're recharging. Initially, we'll be focused on the public car parks and uh, obviously the uh, partners, the primary ones are the Link and Wilson and we have other partners lined up and you'll be seeing the car parks across our supply territory. So new territories, Kowloon and Lantau Island. We want to make sure wherever you go in Hong Kong, you're not very far away from a place where you can charge your car. COP worked with Polytechnic University to design the charging stations. In the initial phase, the recharging stations will be located at these planned car parks in Kowloon East, Kowloon West, New Territories East and New Territories West. Hong Kong Electric has yet to announce plans for Hong Kong Island and declined to be interviewed for this story. CLP said motorists should check its website for additional locations and the latest information. In making the case for EVs, CLP and other backers note the lower total cost of ownership compared to fossil fuel burning cars. To drive 50 kilometers, you need $12 worth of electricity. To go the same distance on petrol, you would need $34 worth of fuel. What is more, EV owners can use the recharging facilities at no cost through the end of the year. The Link is looking at introducing an EV card or an electric vehicle card, which is a special card designed specifically for users of electric vehicles. It allows users of electric vehicle to come in for 12 hours a day, free of charge, to come in and charge their cars in the car park. One thing seems certain, however. As more EVs take to the road, demand for electricity is bound to rise. And that's a worry to environmental groups. They note that much of today's electricity is produced by burning coal. And less cleaner sources of fuel are used, pollution is just shifting from automobiles to power plants. What we will do is to like, explain the, the bigger picture. Yeah, I, you're not going to like, encourage your member oh, to buy to try it, because then it's kind of, oh, are we doing sales? <laughs> I don't think that's a pressure group should be doing well, without the power plant improving the, the efficiency and then creating less pollution is, to a certain extent, is just taking off the pollution from the roadside to the power plant. COP, however, is quick with an answer. It notes that it's relying less on coal and more on cleaner burning fuels such as liquid natural gas. In Hong Kong, COP supplies 70% of the local electricity consumption. Our energy vision is to reduce the reliance on coal by uh, using more natural gas for local generation, importing more nuclear power, and promoting uh, local renewable resources. So with all these initiatives, I'm confident that in the Hong Kong situation, 
electrification of transportation could result in a net reduction in greenhouse gas emission. Because present charging technology uses a standard current, COP has been able to wire up car parks for a relatively low cost. But a widespread switch over to EVs may not come without additional investment. Industry researchers are developing so-called quick charging technology. Instead of the six to eight hours it now takes to top off your battery, you could get it done in just a fraction of that time. If quick charging becomes the norm, COP would need to make additional upgrades to its delivery infrastructure. The road has been long on the way to EVs. CLP has been a supporter for the past 25 years. It bought its first EV in 1984. And that raises an interesting point. Will EVs remain on the cutting edge of fantasy, or can they truly enter mainstream? CLP is optimistic that this time, we're seeing the start of a meaningful trend. Actually, EV is not a new thing in the sense uh, that in the last few decades, there have been many attempts to make uh, EV mainstream. It didn't quite work due to a number of reasons, mostly uh, technology uh, related. But in the last two years, because of the rising oil price and the concerns over air quality and uh, climate change, we see a renaissance in uh, electric uh, vehicles. So I think now probably is the best prospect for, for, uh, for EV.